Hello, this is Jeff from EarthAndSkyPhoto.com and thank you for checking out this video. This video is for you if you are searching for a lightweight, portable, and fully capable astrophotography platform that you could set up within minutes from your backyard and something that you could also use with deep sky filters like an STC dual band filter or any light pollution filter. So thank you for checking out the video and let's just dive right in. I was initially impressed with the Ioptron Skyguider Pro performance at some recent outings and so I wanted to dig into exploring the tracking capabilities, auto guiding capabilities um, with a little bit longer focal length. Now I have an idea to go even longer but this is just the uh, the best astrophotography lens I have right now. It's an 85 millimeter uh, F2, so it's great for my backyard, a Rokinon. And what I want to do tonight is see how it uh, works with the STC dual narrow band filter. And then the other items, I'm, this is a test of a lot of stuff tonight. This is the uh, ZWO uh, 120 Mini and guide, guide chip guide scope on their mini guide scope so I just uh, did a calibration on the iPad or not a calibration but I just made sure all the equipment was talking to each other through the ASI Air which is in my opinion a revolutionary device that allows me to do things in a very uh, portable and easy to use non laptop configuration so this is going to be our proof of concept. If this works tonight, we're hoping to get up to somewhere around a 250 millimeter focal length. After a few little trials of just learning the new equipment, it looks like we are gathering data here. We went with a default of a five minute exposure and we're on our first exposure with auto guiding with our 120 mini on the mini scope. And well, a couple of notes on <clears throat> just getting familiar with the guiding with the um, 120 mini on the 120 on the uh, mini guide scope. I turned down the aggressiveness on the right ascension down to 65% and it looks like it's doing a really nice job on the auto. Third exposure really shows that the lens is not really up to speed for the 294 MC at F2, uh, it's, I just stopped it down to F4. As you can see, it's performing much better. The corners. Okay, we really got everything dialed in now. I had a little bit of a fogging up with the chip. I tried to lower the temperature down to minus 10 Celsius, but I um, went ahead and raised it back up to zero. And the auto guiding is just doing fantastic. This is a 10 minute sub exposure and at the uh, 85 millimeter at f4 so here's one extreme corner this corner here has consistently been a little elongated this is probably a little field rotation more than anything but just look at the stars we really are getting some very nice uh, exposures here and um, I'm very happy with uh, what we're getting with the 10 minute exposures of a gain of 185 with the uh, 294 ZWO ASI That's one criteria for 
the astrophotography setup that I'm looking for right now, and that is being able to carry it out almost in one trip. Really, it's all in one trip if I go with um, hand warmers for dew heaters. The only other thing I'd have to add are some dew heaters onto the system. So we just got back from the Marshall football game. That's why I'm dressed in my <laughs> post-game attire, but we have a clear night tonight. So not only is the gear, the astrophotography gear, the lenses and the cameras important, but also how do you attach these to your platform. And that's one of the things I wanted to review here is you can see that I've, I'm attaching the mini guide scope, which comes with this uh, L bracket and dovetail mount. I'm using a really right stuff camera bracket in a really right stuff turn screw uh, compression mounting uh, dovetail mount that attaches to what you can buy separately that it, ZWO offers for their cameras. It holds their cameras very nicely in, in their camera holder. I'm also using a really right stuff mini ball head. Now what I would recommend is whatever attachment you use here, it could be a dovetail right on top of the declination axis, but it's always best if you have a nice controllable, uh, some friction that avoids resistance on your declination so you can achieve your framing and you know you can lock your right ascension in uh, obviously but this way you can do just some micro control of your declination for your framing of your objects and that helps a great deal the other piece that is vital is your tripod now i'm going to actually upgrade this tripod i did order the ioptron tripod to go with this but the Manfrotto Bogan 3211 seems to work very nicely for this 85 millimeter lens that's on here. It's holding this capacity just fine. And the other tool that really changed, has changed a lot about my imaging, especially remotely and uh, portability, are these Orion Dynamo uh, Pro Packs, these lithium ion batteries. I've used this for two nights to control them. ZWO, the, A the cameras, the ASI Air, and it's still fully charged. So this is the connection and kind of the supplemental materials that go along with the gear. Okay, so that wraps up our proof of concept experimentation here with the Ioptron mount and the ZWO ASI 120 guide guider, the mini guide scope, 294MC on my 85 millimeter Canon lens. What was I trying to do? My initial experience with the DSLR on the Ioptron with the 85 millimeter was fantastic, unguided. But I was having to use high ISOs. I was using them from a dark sky. So I was using 30 second exposures at I believe ISO 6400. So my goal was to see, can we go for longer exposure times guiding this mount with some filters like the STC dual band filter and can we achieve that? And I would have to unequivocally say, yes, we can. That was 10 minute exposures, right ascension guiding only. The polar scope is fantastic. It seems to be able to get, get accurate enough for an 85 millimeter lens. I'm hopeful that all of this translates into the RED 51. That's a 250 millimeter focal length. I'll follow this up with a supplemental video that reviews that. But this looks like a great package that I'm going to be able to come home from work, still have the energy to take this right outside. Finding the composition is a little challenging. I'm spoiled by plate solving and go-to on my current uh, astrophotography setup, but I'll, I'll post a picture of that so you kind of see what it is. Proof of concept, this works. This is going to work for me. I'm very happy with it. I'm going to follow up with the 250 millimeter focal length to see if we can continue to get the accurate guiding and the uh, tracking of the platform stable with that guide scope. Now I'm not gonna process the image uh, on the video here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gather some more data. I'll post the image on my Astro Bin or on my earthandskyphoto.com website. So you can follow it there and I'll, I'll post the, uh, the completed image of IC 1396 and uh, surrounding nebulosities squid nebula if we can pull that out i don't know that i'm going to get enough data on that so far very happy with this i highly recommend this package and if you have any questions just uh, drop me an email put it in the comments section 
like and subscribe. I'll produce these videos occasionally if I feel like I have some material that can supplement material that's already being produced by Astro Backyard and uh, others in the astrophotography community. So thanks a lot for watching and clear skies. Thank you.